Welcome to the New Books Network. Hi, welcome to the New Books Network's Library Science Channel. My name is Halal Yadin. I am your host today, um, and I am here to talk about On the Digital Humanities, Essays and Provocations with Stephen Ramsey. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and the book and your general background? Sure, yes, as you say, I'm, I'm uh, Steve Ramsey. Um, most people call me Steve. I am I am uh, uh, an associate professor of English and a fellow at the Center for Digital Research in the Humanities at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. And I just I uh, I have a book that is out now um, from University of Minnesota Press um, uh, on the digital humanities essays and provocations and uh, and yeah. So then I've been I've been involved in the digital humanities community in one way or another since the 1990s or so, late 90s, I would say. And can you tell us about the format of the book? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, it's a, it's, it really is a, a collection of, um, it's really a collection of essays. And I, I wish I had a, I wish I had a, a good origin story, right? There's, 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 so, you know, um, you're doing this sort of thing. People, people say, you know, how did this book come about? And, and, uh, um, I, I, uh, it came about really because I, <laughs> um, I wrote a book in 2011 uh, called uh, Reading Machines, uh, and that was that book was really a defense of digital humanities. Didn't say that on the on the cover, but that's really what it was. It was it was kind of a it, people were uh, a little nervous about about uh, um, digital D, DH. They were they were. Um, uh, uh, worried or confused or weren't sure what what this was and what the digital meant for for the humanities and so i wrote this book and that kind of put me on this um put me on the speaker circuit right people were inviting me to come <laughs> and to explain myself and i think what they were they, this is really luck on my part they, they really invited me to come and say you know well answer these questions for us what's the field about and that sort of thing um, so I I wrote a, a lot of talks where I tried to um, talk about what I thought the, the the big issues were in digital humanities, what the challenges were, what uh, what was exciting and hopeful about it, all of that kind of thing. Um, and now I think it's the I think uh, good, smart, conscientious scholars what what they do is when they go give a talk like that, they come home and they say. You know what I'll do? I'll turn this into an article and publish it somewhere. Uh, but I never do that. I just sort of <laughs> throw it in a drawer and move on to the next thing. Uh, so, um, so for the last few years, I you know, I had this idea. You know, I should probably take all that stuff and revisit it, and work at it, and uh, take you know, see see what's what is uh, still still relevant, what questions are still outstanding, and. And, uh, and and publish them all as one as one collection. And uh, fortunately, an editor at the University of Minnesota Press thought that was a good idea too. And so, and so here we are. So that's really where really where the book came from. Um, I will also admit too that uh, that um, that the pandemic had something to do with it. I I I found, and maybe we can talk about this. I, I found uh, when when uh, during lockdown, I I found the inability to go to a physical library was was way more. A troublesome weather. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, yeah. I had planned the whole, you know, sort of research project, and I, I found that oh, I, you know, I, I, I had uh, every every faith that that um, that the online resources would would uh, be perfectly funny, but actually, I, I found it really hard. So it, this project seemed a little, little more doable. You know. Well, I think that that's actually really interesting and relevant to the big questions if you want to talk more about what was that disconnect between the digital resources and you are hoping to accomplish yeah, especially since i think that's quite up your alley as well so <laughs> maybe we should talk about that at some point yeah all right um so the core of your work or at least you know the past 10 or so years that i got from reading the essays um really seems to be about asking questions, maybe not asking good questions. Maybe that's not, you know, you don't want to put a value judgment on it, but asking productive questions. 
um, and really building the tools to enable asking different questions. Um, so what does, what in your view, what does DH offer all of these disparate fields in the humanities um, that their core methodologies don't in terms of asking and answering questions? Yeah, you know, I think I think um, there's this there's a few different ways to, to think about that. I think uh, you know, one is 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 uh, surely there are there are some sort of things that we would like to know about as humanists, or that are potentially interesting, or, or something that are that are really only tractable with some kind of computer technology, because just the, the nature of the question. Um, Right around the time I published the, the first book, um, Franco Moretti published uh, um, "Grass Maps and Trees," um, a very, very sort of popular meditation on these um, these subjects. And, and you know, he made a, a, a terrific point, which is that um, you know, who who can who can even say how many novels were published in Europe in the nineteenth century? I mean, we just like is it is that number. Is it sixty thousand? Is it a hundred thousand? I mean, no, no one, no one even really knows the answer to that question. But what one thing that is surely the case is that we can't read them all. No one can. No human being could ever sit down and know and and have that coming to right. So, so it it feels intuitively like computers could help with that kind of um, that. Uh, that doesn't mean they do help. Uh, you yet to write it. It doesn't mean that that. Um, that they are an answer to the kinds of questions we ask in the humanities, but it's at least a, you know, that's a, a suggestive uh, direction is that computers might come to our assistance when we're trying to get at problems like that. Um, uh, there, are, but, but I think that the business of, of asking questions actually had more sort of, uh, there was a certain kind of pressure on, on uh, digital humanities, um, in the early days that, that amounted to saying, is this the humanities at all? Is it, is it asking the kinds of questions that the humanities ask? Uh, really a kind of question, are we in the same category? Are we in the same class? Are we, are we speaking the same language? And, and uh, that, that's, a more, that's, a, that's a more complicated, that's a more complicated question, right? Um, you know, do, do computers, uh, does the, do the, the use, does the use of computers in the humanities yield the kinds of things we want to, uh, 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 you know, I, I think, I guess, I guess, uh, does, 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 the does, does the use of technology to study the human record, does that, um, does that take us into territory that takes us out of humanistic discourse completely? And my, my firm contention to this day is that it does not. Uh, it absolutely does not do that. Uh, but but plenty disagree. <laughs> plenty disagree with me on that on that subject. Like, to this day, I mean, you know, it's interesting. I, you know, I, I said I mentioned that I I I I one of the things I had to do is go back through all this this stuff I written and and see what was still relevant to what what still what spoke to the present moment. Um, you know, I had no trouble finding people who up. I mean, you know, as of yesterday, I'm sorry. Up to the present moment, um, quite convinced that that um, that this digital tech, this digital stuff, is destroying the humanities. It's destroying you know, English departments, the history departments, everything. So, so I mean, track, apparently, I haven't won the argument, but you know, I, I suppose I don't expect it. Well, so what is what are the humanistic questions then, in your view, that the computerized technology is, is speaking to what is your rebuttal to all of your critics i should say yeah okay well there's there's at least uh i think two two sides to my um rebuttal what one um one sort of um slightly irritated and one um and one one i think more my son the slightly irritated response is <clears throat> do you really want this not to exist do you re do <laughs> I've always wondered, you know, in the, the most the more brutal attacks on the field, I've always wondered. So, so do I understand you? You, you, there are people out there who are interested in exploring what various technologies might mean for the study of the human record, but you think they should stop? <laughs> and this it seems to be an aggressively anti-intellectual position. I mean, even if they, 
even if they turn up nothing, uh, you know, they, it's nothing. I mean, it, it, it would be like um, uh, in more. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, there, there are various. There, there are a few academic subjects that I find a little dull. I won't say what they are. You know, they're not. They're not really to my <laughs> taste. Gesture at some in the book. <laughs> anyone listening is curious. What's <laughs> that? Anyone listening is oh, curious. Which about, yeah. one? You might be able to figure it out if you read the book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a few. There's a few academic subjects that bore me a little, and I, I, um, uh, but I, but I surely, I don't, I, I'm very glad that people are out there doing them. I don't, I don't want people to stop. I mean, it, it just seems, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a, a big community of people who who are interested in this. They seem to have, they have the credentials certainly, and they seem to have the the the, the intellectual integrity of you know to, uh, um. They, they seem to have intellectual integrity that they're not asking these questions out of opportunism or something. So, so, so that's my first kind of sarcastic answer. The second, the second is more subtle, and it and it's that I, I really, I really, if when I try to say what, um, and actually, you know, it's been one of the, the more fascinating things about my my uh, intellectual career is that. You know, I my the only training I have is as an English uh, professor, as a literary critic. Uh, but but through uh, you know luck and happenstance, just the way my career went, um, I I found myself having to think about the humanities a lot, uh, and uh, which meant I think you know tr- trying to understand well you know what what does what do human what do, what do historians really do um, you know <laughs> what the, 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 what question. Well, <laughs> yeah, what 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 what's different about art history, or what's different about um, historic? What do historical archaeologists really do? What what what? How do they think about our classicists or or philosophers or any any of those? Um, and and um, but then the next question is what what unites all these folks? Um, and I I think what what unites all of these folks is that is that we we are all looking for patterns. We're all looking at the human record, however broadly, you know, as broadly as, you, as I can possibly be interested in the human record, whether that's visual or written folklore, oral histories, and all, all, all of it. Right. What we're trying to find is patterns, regularities, dissonances, and anything, anything that suggests a way of understanding uh, this, uh, this material as it it's it's regularities, the regularities in its behavior um, over time. Whether we're talking about colonialism, or we're talking about the history of a particular text, or we're talking about um, we're talking about the way uh, women are represented in in Western art, or whatever it might be. Uh, I I think that that that's that's about where that's that's where a historian and a literary critic and an historical archaeologist that's probably where we're all on the same page, and it also means. That that we're we are all talking about at a, at a next level up. We're all talking about what interpretation is, what makes an interpretation valid, if there's such a thing as validity in interpretation, and so forth. I I, I think that's why um, that's why at a digital humanist the humanities conference where you have dozens of people from dozens of disciplines all, all in humanities. I, I think it's why we can all talk to each other because we're. <laughs> Even though I might know nothing, and I, I really do, I know next to nothing about you know the the, the work of historical archaeology. Uh, I, I I can follow what what you know at, at, at some level we can talk, we can speak to each other and understand each other because we do have a common set of philosophies. I do want to go back to this this question of interpretation and pattern making, um, but one thing that what you just said made me think of from the book is this comparison to psychology departments where side by side you have the talk to me about your childhood psychologists and the cut open a rat's brain psychologists, right? And nobody's saying they're not both doing psychology, but very different, very different methods are coexisting. And do you, do you see, or are you on some level striving for a future where maybe you know, in a history department, there's the looking at one document for years, historian and the digital historian, and those are equally 
valid and I will keep using historians because I am an archivist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. I want to, to publicly apologize to any psychologists I might have offended. <laughs> Sorry. That is more or less a direct quote from the book. Yes, I did. No, it is a direct <laughs> quote. I, I, I did write it. I, I, I hope uh, it's, it's tongue in cheek. <laughs> it's all, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, um, uh, not only, I mean, the, there are uh, in the same department in the story, and there might be an historian who really is trying to, um, trying to, trying to pick apart uh, a, a really, a really sort of tiny uh, <laughs> things, uh, uh, event, you know, so trying to understand what happened even on a single day or what happened at a, at a meeting or what happened at a, you know, you might be studying the, the Berlin conference or the, or the, or the uh, constitutional convention or something. And, you know, you've divided yourself really to, to, or a Supreme court case. The, there are also historians in that same department who are studying you know, huge swaths of European history or, you know, the Napoleonic Wars or something like that. And again, that 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 doesn't they they there is something that unites those people. So there are already very different methods in any department. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But then something but then they don't um we it's you know it's I mean, this is corrupt because it, it it uh we were having uh, it, my department has been having this conversation. I mean the English is a pretty just just in my department there are first of all there People study all different periods of literature, but there are lit scholars. Um, there are creative writing specialists, poets, novelists. Uh, there's also specialists in composition and rhetoric. Uh, we all go to different conferences. We all go to different. And the question has come up: What? What? What unites all of us? And I think, I think, I think there are things that unite us. It's not. It's not. Um, we're not. We don't just happen to be in the same department. And I think. With the humanities too, if we were to create a, a school of the humanities, and we said, uh, and, and it, well, some places have such things like a college of the humanities, um, certain things would be in it and certain things uh, would not, um, and and I, I I think we would um, we would we 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 we'd, uh, we'd get that sorting hat worked out pretty uh, quickly, right? That <laughs> that the chemistry is not I mean, probably doesn't belong in the same building as the historians, the literary critics, and the, and the artists. That's, yeah, that's interesting. So back to this, um, you write in the book that digital humanities facilitates the process of pattern formation. Um, and, you know, a real thread of this is ways that you can pull out patterns to then interpret them. Um Another thing that is coming to mind that I've been chewing over since I read it um, is you describing computers as machines that build other machines, um, which I thought, sorry? Yeah, I'm writing about that now, actually. Oh, okay. Well, do, well, you know, so before we get into patterns, is there anything you want to say about that? Because I thought that that was a very, for me as a, I know, very basic Python that's what I need for my job. That's what I use. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a programmer. Um, and I thought that that was a really useful way of thinking about computers. And if you're writing about it, <laughs> not to put you on the spot, is there more that you want to say about that in terms of, in general, or in terms of the field? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, um, I, like I said, I, I'm, since I, I'm, Writing about that, writing about some of these issues now, and I and so I, I have nothing but half baked, half formed thoughts. <laughs> uh, but I do say I do say something like this to my students every year: that the computer is really not like other machines. It's it's really, uh, you know, that if we were to sit down and list the the most epochal uh, technological innovations ever, or in the last five thousand years or something, um, we would rightfully. Um, uh, we could even do a, I could even do a poll with my students, and they'll hit on you know the the printing press and the steel plow and the 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 clock and you know and so forth. Uh, but uh, but there are different kinds of plows and uh, and there are different kinds of clocks and things like that. But the thing about computers is you can you can make a computer be a clock, and you can also make it be a printing press. You could also you can't quite make it a plow, but you can make it control one. And in fact, every every modern plow is in fact controlled by a, a computer of some sort. That seems to 
to me to put it in a different category of machines, that it's a, a different kind of thing. Uh, you know, when you sit down to write anything in Python, however, uh, however, um, however uh, simple you may regard it, um, you know, you really are taking this machine and using it to go do <laughs> some task that it didn't know how to do before you sat down and told it how to do it. I mean, that, that, and I, I, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things about my field is that, is that we're, we're often accused, um, and I, and I see why, but we're, we're often accused of being digital, you know, sort of utopianists or something that, that we're sort of fan, we're big fans of technology. We're big, we, 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 um, and, and there's a there's a little bit of truth to that. I mean, obviously, we're interested in technology. We wouldn't be involved with it. But but this this idea that we see we see no downside uh, you know, <laughs> to, to automation. We see no we see nothing negative about uh, Silicon Valley. We see nothing. Um, we look at we look at uh, X, uh, <laughs> platform formerly known as Twitter. We look at it as an absolutely critical. I mean, it could, you know, of course, we 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 understand. Very, I, I think we understand very well that yes, you can control a plow, you can also control an atomic weapon system. And, and you know, the, the, this, in fact, the, the part of the consequence of being a machine that can be that can create machines, uh, is I think, and here's here, I want, <laughs> you know, I need to think more carefully through this, but, but I mean, it can uh, let it can lend itself to good or evil, certainly. <laughs> That's a, I think often the people who are working most closely with the tools are the ones who are most critical of them. That's absolutely not my impression of digital humanists, that they are not thinking of the the negative consequences. Yeah, uh, I can... Yeah, well, that's that's good. Although I, I can think of plenty. <laughs> I can think of plenty of people disagree with me, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, actually, you know, I'll tell you something. Um, I'll tell you something really, really interesting is that that uh, that um, I don't know, uh, I, or I exaggerate a bit, but I, I know lots and lots of digital humanists who entertain a great, um, great fondness for for fountain pens and calligraphy and all the book arts and and letterpress printing and and some not this isn't just an interest. I mean, um, I can think of a couple people in the field who run full blown labs where where they sort of walk students through the, the, the history of printing that they are, they're full on. I'm thinking of people like Matt Kirschenbaum uh, at the university of Maryland, uh, Ryan Cordell is at the university of Illinois. Both of them run these labs that, that are full of uh, printing presses, oh, the kind you pull the bar and earth. Yeah. You know, I mean, so they, 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 uh, oh, I, I, I mean, I think they, they uh, they're interested in the history of technology uh, more broadly, but it's hard not to think that um, we're also <laughs> maybe trying to get off the screens a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't want to put words in my mouth, but I mean, I, I feel that too. I I, I have a I have a pretty sizable collection of fountain pens, and <laughs> I mean the the listeners will not be able to see this, but I'm looking at your room right now full of paper books <laughs> you know even, the, room, yes, even yes. the most devoted digital people are still you know engaging with the analog world oh, um, sure. and, and uh, uh that's another uh, that's another thing i tell my students uh, this you know uh and, and the, you hear this less now i mean back when i started it was sort of like book versus computer i mean that yeah really a little before my time but i've read the <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't read it. this course and uh, you know, I, I used to say to my students, I still say it, but I that uh, you know, if if I ever invent um, invent a technology that is light, portable, cheap, and lasts a couple thousand years, I'll consider my time on this earth well spent. Right? I mean, the, the book is a, the, the Codex book is done really well. Uh, you know, I mean, we we see this in just the general world when the Kindle came out. There was all of this doomsday about the end of the print book, and it just never happened. You know, ebooks did not replace books. <laughs> books are actually no, no, increasing right. in popularity. You know, there's, there's, but they, people also love ebooks. You know, there's actually no antagonism. No, I, I, um, 
it's it's true. We we didn't, uh, and actually the, the the subject hanging over any such discussion right now, of course, is is AI and AI uh, means. Um, uh, it's hard to recapture. People forget that the the um, the moral panic over ebooks, and uh, you know, I mean, people really, you know, they're very they're very upset about this. Um, and um, and and uh, you know, they didn't replace books, as you say, but they also didn't disappear. They didn't. Um, um, I loved ebooks um, in all kinds of circumstances, uh, especially airplanes. I think you yeah. the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> and I, read, traveling, I, love, I read physical books at home and on my commute. I read ebooks on my tiny little phone that's <laughs> close to my face. And it's, right. you, you know, <laughs> there's different technologies serve different functions. Right. And you probably don't um, feel as if you're making a moral decision when you do. I really that. don't. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> uh, but it did feel like a moral. It did yeah, you know, no. uh, feel like a. Um, uh, well, there's also, and this is, this is maybe something that you can speak to more, but this idea that a book is a pure technology or just a pure reading is a pure pursuit in some way, um, in a way that computer anything isn't, uh, this is not something that I agree with, but it's certainly something that there's a lot of reverence for the book um, in a way that I don't think there is necessarily, at least in the humanities, for these digital technologies. I wonder about that, though. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, the, the, the internet sort of hit the, the year I graduated from college. So, so I, so I, uh, I went off to college with a typewriter. And then went off to grad school, and the and the, the internet appeared. So, so I'm in this generation that very well remembers the, the times before our computers. And for mo- most of my life, I I I couldn't imagine anyone feeling nostalgia for computer equipment. I mean, that seemed impossible. To, you know, it seemed um, you know. You you could you could easily imagine, well, you didn't have to imagine. You you could feel the a very romantic attachment to the smell of books and libraries and the. I mean, I think I think for a lot of us who went into the kind of professions that you and I did, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that we have yeah, to, that, that, really that, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a romantic attachment to yeah to books and libraries and and. In, in all of it, um, and I could not imagine that computers would ever inspire that kind of nostalgia. Uh, I think that the record is in. Uh, there are all these people trying to restore computers from the '60s, the '70s, even the '50s. Retro, yeah, computers, that's true. Ret- retro gaming, uh, eight-bit music. Uh, you know, I mean, so so I I I've been uh, my my instincts about this at the beginning. I think were quite wrong that 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 people could get. Very attached to, uh, to, you know, and and but that only that only raises more questions. Like, what what is it about? Um, I, do people get do people get emotionally attached to uh, mops and brooms? Do people get emotionally attached? Like, what is it? Is it is, it, is this maybe something that that is, um, maybe not unique to, but but seen often with um with information technology in particular that we we feel we. We develop strong feelings and even strong emotions around anything that is about us communicating with each other. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you want to do you want to say more about that? Yeah, I mean, I just, I just, uh, I guess I just offered as a question. I mean, we, we, we don't like. <laughs> um, I, uh, it, it's, it's funny because an essay that did not make it into the book. I, t- I t- talked about this a little bit. It was from way back. Um, why is it? Uh, that we we don't I mean I remember this I'm really dating myself but I remember this this moment when um, the world switched to um, to uh, uh, pay at the pump gasoline okay. now in New Jersey I think there's a there's a, a law that, that there's no self-serve gasoline you are correct I've put my own gas 
But it looks strife in my life. <laughs> <laughs> most of the country is fine to to pump your own gas, um, and uh, and um, and that was. I mean, there was a time when there was no such thing, uh, and then uh, suddenly everyone could uh, go to the gas station and pull up the car and put in a credit card and pay for gas and leave without ever having any contact with a human being. Um, so similarly, I get, you know, we could use other examples. I mean, um, uh, the, the kind of self self checkout at grocery stores. Um, now, now I don't, I don't, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I would be happy to be corrected on this, but I, I don't, I, I doubt there was much hand wringing of this sort where people said, you know what, this pay at the pump thing, this, this, uh, this self checkout, this is just going to drive us apart. This is just going to represent the breakdown of community and, and things like that. I think there were arguments against it that had to do with jobs and employment, but but not quite the kind of, you know, we're all less human as a result of this technology. You compare that with the telephone. The tele the invention the telephone created, I mean, he, the, you want to talk about moral pain. It's hard to recapture. I mean, people really did say this will this will this may destroy us as a society, but this means we will have less contact with each other. We will become more balkanized in our political opinions. That sound sound familiar? We, you know, we, right, right. I mean, re, real moral pain. And and um, what's the difference? Well, I mean, the, the telephone was, was about communication, was information to whereas you know, the gas station. <laughs> what? I mean, if should, if people might have objected, but not the way, not the way, not the way. They yeah, objected. there was. I've seen a lot of sort of commentary on self checkout and these kinds of things in the way that you're describing, but a different, a different tenor wouldn't get yeah, more with clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Again, may, maybe I, 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 maybe I'm not paying uh, enough attention to the. No, I think, the, I think, I think you're right. I think the intensity of it is, I mean, even the other thing that I was thinking about um, just with books is this apparently still ongoing debate about whether listening to audiobooks is reading um, which I think it kind of speaks to a similar, a, in a different way, it speaks to a similar question about the print book and its its moral value. And I'm I'm firmly on the audio. This is my I'll tell you my bias. I think listening to audiobooks is reading. I don't. You are you are taking in the book, right? But there's all of this. And there's, I'm not in education in any, in any way. I think that there's a lot of this is coming from the education world. We're learning to look at words in a row and take them in with your eyes using certain eye movement and processing them is a different skill than listening to an audiobook for sure. Um, but there is also a real moral debate about is, can we, does it count like does does it count as reading in its essential form and it's like who is counting and who are we counting for i mean we people are not getting at those questions before we talk about audiobooks but this is okay let me get back real quick the point i was making which is the self checkout debates and commentary i mean even compared to the reading books versus listening to audiobooks i would say that there's kind of i've seen more moral Hand wringing about the audiobook. Yeah, hand wringing. Then, is the right, then is the right word, even yeah. the the massive sort of societal shift of people no longer interacting with service workers. Yeah, yeah, I, and I want to. I, I don't want to uh, completely. I, I want to draw a distinction here, but, but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there is a, a debate about self checkout and gasoline, and that de a debates about labor and debates about. And so I don't. I don't want to uh, at all. Um, trivialize those those debates or or make or or say by implication that those don't matter because of course they do and in the case of uh why, why is there no self uh why is there no pay at the pump at in um, new jersey i i believe that that statute is entirely related to jobs I, it, so I you know i looked it up once because i didn't quite buy it there is apparently some mob involvement 
Okay, okay. Which is, which, now we're way out of my expertise. Yeah. But... <laughs> as, a, as a lay scholar of New Jersey, that is my understanding. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> okay. It's New Jersey That's and right. Oregon. They're the only two states. They're very, it's all very, but that is the official reason, yeah, that it was okay, creating yeah. these gas station attendant jobs that if, if we had self-service, those jobs would be lost, which is true. Uh, so, so I just I just don't want to make sure we're not uh, we're we're not. But no, yeah, we're we're we're, we're, we're getting we're good. talking about the the moral elements of these or, debates, yeah. not that there and, are or aren't debates. Yeah, in in the uh, and this issue of nostalgia and things like that, which is which is uh, distinct, I think, from these. I just don't want by again by implication to downplay these other things because, of course, they're no, of course, they're very they're, they're critical they're, questions. They are critical. Yeah, and and and. Uh, and, um, you know, anytime we're talking about automation and nowadays, anytime we're talking about automation, we are talking about computers. And so all of this, you know, it, it would be a mistake too. Uh, but, but in terms of our, our private kind of psychological, I mean, this, this, uh, audio book thing is, is fascinating, isn't it? I mean, um, I suppose one way to defend audio books is very simple. Um, and that is that, uh, is that. For for the for most of human history, uh, there were only audiobooks. <laughs> it, was, it was only oral st- storytelling, and you know, I I uh, I love to look at, um, and I I don't know when you when you look at um, texts in in ancient Greek or in Norn papyrus uh, or really, you know, most most ancient texts. Um, you know, you you don't see uh, punctuation. You don't see spaces. You often see boustrephedon, where things are written as the ox plows. I I I draw for when I look at that sort of thing. I mean, I I am brought to the conclusion that that writing really began as storage. Uh, we were scoring oral, <laughs> like the orality was was right. Uh, saying things out loud, talking, having conversations, brokering agreements, uh, that, that was, that was the primary thing. This was the secondary, the, the writing part was the secondary. Um, now, now what's, what's interesting about, you know, what you said is that, that, um, that, uh, uh, you, you and, and you may you know much more about this than me, that, that there's a concern, at least in some quarters that, that, some essential skill or cognitive ability or affordance or some essential mental piece of uh, gymnastics or something will, will be lost if we're listening and not reading. And and that now I don't I am in I have no expertise as a cognitive science scientist. Me neither. No one right, no, I can't <laughs> <either. laughs> But I, I would I will say um uh that that this is a rather extraordinary turn of events in the history of the world because <laughs> because uh, you don't have to go back very far, uh, um, only really a few centuries to to find um, people feeling that that reading is unambiguously bad for you. It is bad for your eyes. It is bad for your brains. And most of all, it is bad for your morals. And it's especially bad for the morality of of young women who are reading these romances. I mean, Within the space of only three, four hundred years, we go from that to to uh, um, to to one of the great campaigns of your profession, the, 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 the posters of Kermit the Frog, you know, that say "read," right? Like reading, we somehow in the space of a few centuries transformed reading from a, a morally questionable activity to something that is, of all things, actively good for you. A kind of like eat your vegetables vitamins for the brain. I mean, how did this happen? And <laughs> but this was incredible, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, so, so, so to hear, um, the, the work, the, so the, you know, people worried about, about audio books. Um, I have no idea as a, as a, like, I, I don't teach young children or anything. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's at stake there, but it is at least interesting. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of it is not, about that it's about this i you know most i think a lot of what i've seen in my and i think i think this is an increasingly unpopular opinion this idea that listening to audiobooks is fundamentally different from reading a print book um but a lot of it is is not about that at all it's not about early literacy whatever it's really about the idea that this is 
a fundamentally different activity, which I suppose it is, but sort of the implication of it being fundamentally different and worse. Right. Fundamentally different like, of course, worse, listening right? is different from right. reading. That's not what the actual argument yeah. is. The argument is that <laughs> listening is worse. <laughs> yes. I don't want to leave your listeners with the impression that I am, I, you know, I could, I could, I could, I could, do you remember someone said to coming off of someone who's, you know, gloriously unafraid of any future? Um, my, my wife uh, does, um, uh, she, she will uh, listen to things. Uh, at double time or triple time, she'll turn. She'll t- right, she has to absorb. Some, the, I, I, I feel like this is is just absolutely, you know, against some. That this is morally offensive. I mean, I just like <laughs> oh, right. So. There is something there. <laughs> like, you know. Now, but why? <laughs> why? Right. So I have the same question for myself. Why? Why do I have? Why do I feel that that's? Why does that strike me? At, I mean, I, I, you know, it's. The, these are, um, I guess we, we have to admit that these are emotional um, things. And but I think that's yeah. kind of, wh- that's where, that's how we got onto this, is your point about the attachment people have to these information technologies is, uh, there is something emotional there. There is some sort of romance. They're rarefied in some way. I mean, a whole literature about what people are responding to that is very interesting um but yeah it's not always i think we're not always um i will say i i have the same reaction that you do about this listening at the three times speed thing like, i'm thinking about it i'm sitting here why 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 would that matter to me but it does <laughs> well and i and i find i don't really have good reasons um and it, and maybe you know, I mean, this comes back to to, to what the what the book is about. You know, I, I mean, I, I feel like um, what, uh, yeah, I I had I had, we have people out there writing for the the New Republic and the L.A. Review of Books and the you know fairly fairly prominent organs of of um, of talking about books and talking about about um, academia and so forth, Chronicle of Higher Education and so forth. And a lot of people who feel really as if and felt ten years ago and fifteen years ago that the sky is falling uh, with this with this digital stuff, um, and I and I sort of knew that that we were ha- I I knew and I think uh, perhaps they knew <laughs> too, that, too that we were having an emotional argument and 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 that what was really at stake here was not it, it we ultimately we were not talking about. Ebooks versus books. We were not talking about key, you know, pens versus keyboards. We, that that really it's it sounded like that at times. But what was really at stake was is is will will I or will we have as rich an intellectual experience as 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 um, as spiritual in experience, you know, the, the, moment, the moment of surprise, the moment of discovery, all the, all the things for which we value the intellectual life and the life of the mind. Can we have those with computers? That was real. That was really the question. And I, I, I think almost everything I've written has been, has been addressing that yes. question. Oh, wait, <laughs> trying to, yes. <laughs> trying to, yes, yes. We, yeah. the, the experiences you can have with computers are, are different, but yes, you, you, you can have we we it, like, fear, you know. I don't like um, triple speed audio, <laughs> you know? and you are free not to like text analysis. But if the worry is that we are taking a, where a, a rich intellectual experience, getting rid of it and replacing it with a barren intellectual experience, I, I think that's not true. I will I will I I doubt I will um, repent ever having argued. <laughs> That the work. I, I really that that just has not been my experience of computers and of of working with computers. I shouldn't say my experience of computers. My experience of using computers to study history. I'm going to link for listeners um, in the episode notes. I don't know if this essay exists in open access form, but certainly the things you're discussing do this response to Stanley Fish um, in 2011, I think a lot of the debates that you're talking about 
um, really, I, I think, is, that, is this the moment that you're talking about this 10, 15 years ago when there's all of this sort of <laughs> public debate about the value of the digital humanities? Yeah, yeah. yeah well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna link some of that because I don't know if we have time to get too into that. But for any listeners, um, I'll put that in the notes. Um, I I really hope Stanley Fish is listening to this podcast. I, I don't I don't know I don't know what the chances of that are, but I I hope you know um, Professor Fish is an extremely learned uh, uh, and 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 very uh, voracious uh, consumer of. So, so I, I would really, I, I would really love to send him that essay. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whenever I write something and I cite someone, I cold email it to them. <laughs> I actually yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, I'm, uh, he, he's such a giant in my field. He's retired. right. I, I uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just send it off to him too. Yeah. Um. um Okay, I'll we'll keep it to a few a few more questions. Um, let's end it on this. Actually, I think this this is a good a good question to wrap up with. I mean, the word under theorized comes up quite a bit. I think generally from critics of digital humanities saying that this pursuit is under theorized, and you're responding to them. Um, but I'm wondering, what are the theories of DH? And also, are there elements of the discipline that are under-theorized? And what are those? Yeah, the, the, last, the, the, the answer to the last question is yes, and hopefully so, or, or what will we do? I mean, hopefully there are things we haven't sufficiently reflected upon. Uh, of course, you know, when people say something is under-theorized, one, one suspects a kind of a, a, a slur, you know, a kind of... Right. It's <laughs> not a compliment. It, it, it's a polite way of saying, you know, <laughs> people are thinking deeply enough for your... I mean, I don't think people are asking for a, a theory. Um, and I also... I'm not, I'm not sure that 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 DH... Uh, and and here here I, I can... I can plenty of people can... Uh, I can imagine a level very articulate disagreements with what I'm saying, but I, I don't think digital humanities as a field advances a particular theory of anything. If a, if by theory we mean uh, a, uh, a some, some sort of... So I, I understand a theory to be something like um, some kind of narrative, some kind of framework, some kind of way, habit of mind, or way of thinking that has a certain kind of explanatory power, right? And this... This, of course, I mean, you know, the, in the sciences, we have theories, you know, of evolution that, it, you know, say, or of um, relativity or whatever, so, you know, something that has explanatory power with respect to natural phenomena. I think something like this is true in the humanities as well. Except, you know, we're trying to explain, um, we're trying to explain uh, post-colonial, the post-colonial condition, and we, we, and again, I think this brings us back to pattern. We, we develop ideas uh, uh, um, by looking at regularities and patterns and things like that. We, we develop uh, frameworks in which to think about certain phenomena. Uh, so there are lots of theories put forth to uh, offer explanatory, you know, there are lots of explanatory frameworks for lots of explanatory things. But digital humanities is kind of a meta discipline in that way. I mean, I, I think it, it doesn't itself provide uh, explanatory frameworks. Um, um, what it what it might do though is is offer uh, deep thinking, I hope, about about methodology, about about ma methods of doing things. Um, what are their uh, you know what are their um, what are they good at? What are they bad at? What is gained? What is lost? Um, and and I hope that on on the like so if the charge is that is that we are uh, not we're under theorists we're not doing our job with respect to that um, the answer is probably yes and as I said hope so I hope so uh, but I but I don't think I don't think we right in the in the sense that that one would hope that we we are as reflective as we can be but I I don't think. DH is represents a particular framework for looking at the world, or a particular framework for looking at, at literature. I, I, you know, you're asking a question that that um, as I as I 
as I mutter on here, it becomes becomes more complicated the more I think about it. I yeah, you know, I don't I, I'd be interested. I, now now I want to go find out what other people think about that. But I, I do I don't think I would love to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, but what so I mean, um I've been accused of being under theorized more more times than I, I you know. And and again, I always I always detect a certain kind of slur <laughs> it's sufficiently reflective and and um you know hopefully um hope to 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 the degree that that is an invitation to a certain kind of skepticism toward what is being assumed or what is being uh i i hope we continue to be i have i hope i hope all humanists are regularly charged with this, <laughs> with this malady because this is a good thing to we have we have blind spots in DH all over the place. I do. I everyone everyone does. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's good. Um, although, I, I, if if I may, I think there's also another there's another way in which that is being used and that, that phrase being used. It means uh, you you guys are <laughs> you people are down with the Frankfurt School or cultural studies of that, right? That, that you know, what they what they really mean is is uh, and and. Uh, Honestly, I think some are and some aren't. Um, that that's more of a that's that's a that's a trickier uh, question. Some people do come at the age precisely from those sorts of angles, uh, and some don't. But um, many don't. But uh, but so so often it means you know you're not you're not you're not you're not um, you're not using the, the same telescope I'm using, or microscope you're using the theoretical framework I would prefer. I think that everything you just said is a very useful way of thinking about the theories of digital humanities for me. Um, I think that's a good place to end off. So thank you so much for joining me this afternoon um, and for sharing more about your book that I hope people now go get and read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Indy, thank you very much. I really, I really enjoyed talking to you and really appreciate uh, the opportunity to to talk about the uh, the book and all this this other stuff. <laughs> all this stuff all <laughs> <that> comes up. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. 